Hey everyone, welcome to this video, HK here. Today we're gonna go over rope simulations in Cinema 4D S26. So this is a new simulation system, new tax. I'm gonna show you my settings and also how many drinks you have on your table. I'm gonna bring in planes one and then hold control and drag it. Hold shift at the same time and push it back. It's gonna be our testing scene. I'm just gonna zoom out and also push this one out bottom. So this is gonna be our testing range. Now to both of these planes, uh, which uh, this one with floor, this one is wall. And we apply to both of those, we go to simulation tax and we select collider. We now set up the scene that we can bring in our spline because all ropes, uh, they just start with spline. I already has written a segment where if you go to library and you type in segment, you can bring in segment and this will create straight spline. You can draw splines as well as no problem with that. The problem with the drawing spline is that you have no way to tell if it's a straight spline. I mean, if you go into orthographic, you're probably able, you know, to draw a spline that is a bit straight, but I wouldn't count on that. So I'll just delete those two and use our segment. So I'm just going to press R, rotate it just so we have it vertically. And I'm also going to go to our filter and get rid of our work plane just so it's not bothering us. Now I have the spline here. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just going to click on that segment and make the length 250. That will give us enough rope for some nice simulation. Also, we increase the point count because if I would, uh, I wouldn't increase the point count, then there's no way that this can break into these little swirls and stuff. So I'm just going to go increase that point count to 40 and we'll check it uh, if that's too much. Uh, so I'm going to bring uh, in our sweep, so sweep object and put the segment inside it. And now I need just end gone for extrusion. So if I select this end size spline and just put it in between them, it will select that end size and I'm just going to make the radius and you will remember that number radius uh, is two centimeters and sides could be 11. So that's already nice rope. So if I click that sweep, just bring it a little bit uh, like that. We have end side is radius is two centimeters. And now if I click on the segment, I'm going to right click it, go simulation tax. And I say, hey, make this a rope. You always put the rope tag on a spline, not on the sweep object. And now there's a, you are presented with uh, the tag properties and there's a variety of settings and I'm still yet to figure out the best settings. But today I'm going to show you the settings I used for my mm, simulations. Bendiness 2, stretchiness it's 2.5, bounciness uh, 0 0.3 and friction 1.5 radius it needs to be that's why i said remember that number it needs to be matching that end side radius so two otherwise you will have intersecting ropes so if you have the rope tag your radius should be matching to the radius on your extrusion objects so that's a two centimeters on each so we are fine with that and now if i press play um so if it's going to go from scratch, it will nicely roll and uh, check this camera setting. Yeah, 50, 50 mil. Let's go to 50 normal ones. So that's one, right? So we have one rope and that's great. But then how do you, you know, make it into hundreds and it still works? As that's the thing about the new simulation system. It works super well. So I've been using a uh, cloner to clone these and I've been using radial and then in the radial mode, the cloner, you can just go increase the count and it will try to not to intersect them until it possibly can't. Right. So I can increase to like 50 ropes and then you press play and you notice it's gone. Nothing's happened. The simulation can't carry on. So you simply just make editable the cloner. And now you have 50 ropes separately. Now it's harder for management. So anything, you know, you need to be really comfortable with the settings of your rope 
before you go into these and create 50 different uh, ropes. So, uh, but as you can see, it still works. Go even to 90 and or 200, press C. And again, if I just press play, it will calculate, but then immediately it will just work, right? So I have this nice <laughs> spaghetti. Yeah, it slowed a little, but it's still, it's just incredible how easy it is to simulate now these kind of things. So we're going to go back. Um, I'm just going to go completely back and get rid of our cloner. And we're still going to stay with one. And I'm going to do manually. I'm just going to bring the sweep down a little and duplicate it of oh, five times. Cool. We've got five times. Duplicate it. And okay, we've got these kind of five ropes. And now the next thing you can do, you can actually highlight all these segments, maybe before you clone it or before you duplicate it like me, and press C. So you make them editable. And there's a thing, if you are in a point mode, so if you go from your object mode into point mode, then you can highlight the, this point on this segment, you go to your tag, or you don't even have to. You can just do it from here and you set. So you, you press set and it's going to be fixed point. So then if you press play, then this rope will stay hanging, right? Which is super cool. And you can do a lot of stuff with it. You can do intersecting ropes and, and you can, you can do the same with the other one. Let's do all the others. And that, the, the thing is, this is hanging and there, you, you know, you can even check the stretchiness now and, and the bounciness if it works well for you. But the thing is about spline is you can quickly bring your forces and then you can bring turbulence and the splines will react to that. So if I increase that strength and <laughs> it's too much, then uh, the turbulence will affect that, uh, affect those ropes. And now when it comes to when it comes to UVing this thing, uh, it's, it's, you know, when you apply materials and when you apply something like um, just simple material, just some colorful, which which looks already good, um, you know, and I make it red, then it's all good. It's already looking nice and just increase the roughness a little. And that's good and plastic cable. But then when you want to apply regular materials, so if I just can delete that one and apply this uh material you see how it's stretched so this normally would be so normally it would be looking like that so that would be correct way of you know displaying that material but then the only thing you need to do is you go back there click on that material and the length uh, b you just make it five percent and that usually is about right for this type of length of the so you need to kind of fine tune it and 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 you do it against the you know textures or you can put the the checker the checkerboard and just kind of make it make sure it's a square so this way it's actually it's actually fine uh it works and the same for the others so if i would up, if i would keep applying those i would just always go here and make sure the length we is five and it would be fixing it for me so I can just apply to any of those. The next thing, maybe bring simulate forces and bring in rotation. <laughs> this is pretty crazy though. So if you, if you put the rotation one, uh, it's pretty strong though. Yeah. So basically put them in the rotation, um, you need to flip the rotation depending on your scene. But then, uh, if you, if you rotate before I had rotation like that, it was just completely different look, which is just going insane. So if you just put rotate on ropes and they just start rotating like that. And again, uh, you put, put all the ropes into LG. I mean, so we call it ropes. It's a null object called ropes, bring redshift object there and do the geometry tab override and turn on the tessellation. 
and this will fix all that all of those hard angles i love it you press ctrl d then you can see the simulation tab and then you can check overall and you can increase the iterations and you can increase sub steps and i have sub steps uh increased to 80. so it's quite a high number but that should give you some better interactions uh, with your objects in the scenes and and, and more a real like a physical reaction so again i'm gonna just run it one more time i hope you guys enjoyed this was just a short one um before my holidays i have a lot of work but i wanted to share this one so i hope you love it like i do and i hope you like my new texture pack and if you are interested in these pictures uh, i was thinking to put it on gumroad so let me know what you think what was the price you would pay it's a 20 textures of fabrics which i think there's not too many textures uh, for fabrics um, that are good ones and this one can be recolored easily i've built them the way that you can really make it yours if you want them all to be blue blue like that it's possible and if you want to to be pale or white and just use them as a you know textures then uh, you can do that so it's 4k tileable textures and I also build them into these drag and drop materials where if you know open these then you can control um, the scale of it and you can also control the colors here in the color correct and it has uh, a bump and some of them are a little bit different but overall that's the gist of it so let me know what you think and I'll see you next time we're going to do some more fluid simulations